camera. Just give it, give it, off, give it, off, give down, it, down, give it. Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of Half Good here on Screen.com, where we take a look at films that are recommendable, but with certain reservations. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most obscure films to be based on the work of Philip K. Dick, a little film called Screamers. Now I had fond memories of watching this film when I was 15, but upon revisiting it a decade and a half later, it has unfortunately not aged very well. Some aspects of it are still intriguing, some are kind of stupid, and thus we're inducting Screamers into Screen's Hall of Half Goodness. The Good, based on a short story called The Second Variety. Screamers tells the tale of a civil war on a distant planet that's plagued by radiation and what are known as mobile autonomous swords. These are the first good thing about this film. An odd mixture of Terminators and the creatures from Tremors, Screamers burrow just below the ground, locking in on the heartbeats of those who can't electronically shield themselves from their detectors and gruesomely kill them before dragging their body parts underground to use their biological material as fuel. Unfortunately, the Screamers are rather underused. There's one really good kill at the beginning of the film, and then they kind of disappear for the rest of the movie. The Bad. Now, the Screamers are pretty rad, but the film unfortunately doesn't make good use of them. In a better film, they would have been played up as omnipresent threats, something to fear at all times, but instead our heroes manage to negate their sensors and walk right through the post-apocalyptic wasteland with only minor skirmishes. I think only one person actually dies to a garden variety screamer, in fact, which is a waste of a cool idea. The Good Speaking of post-apocalyptic wastelands, this film does a good job of portraying the world that these men inhabit as a rundown and barren. There's a lot of matte painting work, and the location scouts found some good quarries and abandoned factories to film in, lending the movie a believably desolate feel. I don't see anything! That's the idea! It doesn't look quite as good as Total Recall or Blade Runner, having been made on a much cheaper budget, and some of the matte work would be much more competent nowadays, but it still looks a bit better than your average B-movie. The Bad Speaking of Blade Runner, Screamers might have set itself up for failure by adapting another of Dick's stories about humanoid robots. Blade Runner is an intriguing look at identity and what it means to be a human being, whereas in Screamers and in the short stories based upon, the humanoid version of the killing robots are basically just robots that kill. It's a fine sci-fi idea, but it does like a lot of the nuance that has people still talking about Blade Runner 30 years after it came out. The idea is a solid one, not being able to know whether or not the person you're relying on to watch your back is actually a human or a killer version of the Tin Man, but unfortunately Screamers doesn't really explore it as much more than an excuse for some kind of silly robot fights. The Good, Peter Weller. Peter Weller is well known to genre fans as uh, Robocop and Buckaroo Banzai, and Screamers was one of the last major movies that he actually headlined. The early parts of the film at least have him acting engagingly disillusioned when he discovers that his faction in the Civil War has sold out his troops and intend to leave them all on their desolate planet to die. And he has a really good rapport with his cohort Ross and the uh, secret base that they're in. He's a solid presence in the film even if he isn't given the best material to work with. I'll kill you. The bad. Everyone else. Even though the script's dialogue is marginally better than Dick's stilted exchanges in his short story, these actors still don't really know what to do with it. Go on, genius, you know how to count to three. And we wind up with an ensemble that probably wouldn't feel too out of place in your average sci-fi channel special feature. What are they supposed to look like? Oh, you mean who are they supposed to look like? Look in the mirror, Ross. I'm warning you. In the end, Screamers tends more towards the bad end than the good end of the half-good spectrum. It's not the worst Philip K. Dick movie ever made. It's at least watchable from beginning to end, which is more than I can say for paycheck. But it hardly reaches, let alone aspires to the heights hit by films like Minority Report or Blade Runner. That's probably a function of its fairly weak source material, but still, as a movie, I cannot recommend Screamers. That'll do it for another edition of Half Good here on Screen.com. We'll be back soon enough to sit in harsh judgment on another movie that threads the balance between the excellent and the mediocre. We'll see you then. It really reaches, let alone aspires to the heights hit by films like Minority Report or Blade Runner. That's probably a function of its fairly weak source material, but still, as a movie, I cannot recommend Screamers. That'll do it for another edition of Half Good. Cicero. How is it out there, over? Chuck, we got a new kind of screamer.